All right, how are you doing? He's hoping that all is well with you. I know the World Cup fever is kicking in, but I cannot lie to you. I'm not that much of a fan, but what I can tell you is that tonight we're going to have a very great conversation right here on In Focus. And my name, as always, is Eugene Anangwe. In the program tonight, we're going to be talking about what many people have perceived as a taboo topic, a topic or a conversation that most people would rather not talk about. But of course, it is of great importance to us, and that is why we are putting it on the In Focus dissecting table tonight, just to try and discuss this issue and debate around it, get to hear different perspectives around the question of abortion in Rwanda. And of course, we are looking at the issue of access to safe abortion, despite the fact that there are legal provisions uh, for special cases where one can actually uh, be able to procure an abortion which is uh, determined as safe. There are many of those women and girls who are out there who are forced to seek other crude methods to actually uh, procure abortion just because they claim that the process of actually acquiring this safe abortion under the legally accepted ways are actually cumbersome. We'll be talking about that right in the program, but what we know in Rwanda, abortion remains illegal. Let's take a look at what we know so far about the maternal deaths as a result of a portion this is definitely what we have definitely this is actually a, a, a global chat which actually talks about the uh, causes of maternal death as of 2017 the information or infographic on your screen right now definitely talks about the direct causes uh, number of cases percentage and the categories causes of death number of cases of course and the percentage when we look at this uh, top uh, comes uh, the uh, PPH definitely 85 uh, cases as of uh, 2017 and of course 32.7 uh, percent PPH uh, is postpartum uh, hemorrhage uh, for those who want to understand what that means from a medical term of course uh, uh, the infections are a result of that 20 uh, cases and that accounts to 7.69 percent those who have been asking about the complication as a result of abortion the numbers are right there if you can see them on your screen complications of abortion we had 15 cases of 2017 and that accounts to 5.7 percent a drop from the numbers in 2016 which was actually showing nine percent it is now 5.7 percent definitely these are the numbers but of course if we get down to look into uh, the laws or the legal uh, issues or the status of abortion under the current penal code this penal code is and uh, has been under review of course it is it has some uh, um, um, amendments or proposed amendments let's take a look at article 162 of the current penal code it actually says self-induced abortion will get you uh, a sentence of one to three years in prison or a fine of 50,000 or actually under fine of 50,000 uh, to uh, 200,000 and article 163 causing a woman to abort without her consent will actually land you in jail for 10 to 15 years and in case of mutual consent if both of you agreed that actually you know what procure an abortion for me and you found guilty you would be locked up uh, uh, between two to five years in prison article 164 abortion that results in death if you procure an abortion and actually uh, the woman dies you could get yourself locked up for 15 to 20 years or a fine and a fine of 200,000 uh, to 2 million Rwandan francs. Let's take a look at another statistic right here. S uh, status of abortion under the current uh, uh, penal code still exemption from criminal liability for abortion actually this is that particular stage where if you actually procure an abortion or performs an abortion uh, you may not be uh, liable uh, to uh, you know to have committed a crime and this is when a woman has become pregnant as a result of rape of course a lot of people have talked about this how do you prove that you are raped and by the time you go through the legal procedures of proving that you're actually raped probably the uh, pregnancy would have gone you know to a very uh, you know advanced stage and becomes difficult to actually procure that abortion uh, of course number two when a woman has been subjected to forced marriage again here most people have been talking about how do you prove that you are forced to get married we'll talk about this in the program of course also number three when a woman has become pregnant due to incest in the second degree as well we'll break down this uh, in the course of the program and then number four when the continuation of pregnancy seriously jeopardizes the health 
of the unborn baby or that of the pregnant woman. Still more statistics here because tonight we're going to be talking about facts and nothing more than just that. Self-induced abortion. Uh, this is actually what has been uh, uh, determined under the draft uh, you know, uh, uh, law or the penal code. Self-induced abortion is an offense. Conviction attracts imprisonment for a term of not less than one year and not more than three years and a fine of not less than 100,000 Rwandan francs. Of course, this is what we have uh, right there as far as that is concerned. The current draft determining of offenses and penalties, of course, performing an abortion on another person is actually still an offense and conviction attracts imprisonment of a term not less than uh, three years and not more than uh, five years. Any person who, because of uh, inattention or negligence, causes another person to abort shall be liable to imprisonment. Definitely that is what we have right there. Let's take a look at uh, this one on the exemption of criminal liability. We have if the present person is a child. These are the, uh, the proposed changes. If the person having abortion had become pregnant as a result of rape, the person having abortion had become pregnant after being subjected to a forced marriage and the person having abortion had become pregnant as a result of incest. Of course, here the degree is not being mentioned and the pregnancy puts at risk the health of the pregnant person or that of the fetus. Definitely, it is a conversation that is very interactive. All you need to do is tweet us at the hashtag in focus RW and I'll be sampling some of the tweets that are coming through. Already we have people who are talking. Let's take a look at this. Janie Olslon, who is actually the ambassador of Sweden in Rwanda, says around 47,000 mothers, sisters and daughters die globally every year of dangerous abortions. It is somewhat misleading to call forces and policies that pushes girls to do dangerous illegal abortions pro-life. Women's lives count or actually also count so keep talking i'll be reading these tweets in the course of the program let me now introduce our panelists ladies and gentlemen a very very wide introduction with a lot of facts but let's talk about uh, this but before we get into that uh, it's important to understand that we have here the bishop himself and of course is dr fidel masengo Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you, Toby. Also with us is none other than Janet Mubana, who is actually the co-founder of Gahaya Links, and will be speaking to us tonight from a perspective of a, a family person or a mother. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you for having also me. Also with us is none other than Dr. Afrodis Kagawa from the HDI, Health Development Initiative. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. And of course, we also have Juliet Karitani, who's a journalist and a self-proclaimed feminist. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Now, looking at this issue, I want to hear, first of all, the perspective of uh, the good bishop, because most people have actually been saying that, you know what, the religious leaders have actually played a major role in, you know, saying, no, no, whether uh, uh, safe or unsafe, abortion should not be allowed, should not be something that we should be discussing. Is this something that you still stand by? And why would you be looking at that from that uh, angle of saying no, whether the person requires it under what we have seen provided under the law or not at all? Uh, why does the church or the religious leaders do this stand? Uh, thanks a lot, uh, dear Eugene. I, I think you've changed a little bit the subject mm -hmm. of our topics. Mm -hmm. I mean, of our talks. Normally, we're supposed to talk about... Um, uh, access to, access to reproductive, reproductive yeah. health, this being one of them. So now this is a component of that one. Mm -hmm. So sometimes yes. when you say that churches are against this, mm -hmm. it's likely that uh, you are just taking us on only one aspect. Mm -hmm. But remember, access to reproductive uh, health and rights mm -hmm. is a broader topic. Yes. It includes access to sexual education. Mm -hmm. It includes... Um, safe uh, reproductive um, uh, ways. It also include also aspect of abortion. Yes, yes. Now, um, uh, you know, uh, many churches. I am not representative of church leaders yes. here, and uh, I, I I was not invited to be a spokesperson a representative for churches. Of any church, yes. uh, I will just give my opinion. Personal perspective. Um, yes. Uh, as you know, uh, we are pro-life, uh, um, and uh, we advocate for for life. Uh, uh, allowing abortion is also denying the right of somebody to be born. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I will be quoting the Bible sometimes. Uh, when you, you read the Bible, it says that uh, I knew you before 
I created you before I formed you in the womb of your mom. So we do believe that um, um, life do not start with the birth or conception. It starts with the conception, at least if the fetus is uh, viable. Uh, so, um, to my opinion, we can't blindly support adoption without also abortion, rather. Yeah, without s s looking at the other side of the child to be born, who has also, you know, that freedom to life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's why <coughs> many ch church members will tell you that, uh, uh, you know, we don't have to stick on abortion only. We only have to tell people that they should. They should also, um, uh, you know, um, uh, bear their consequences. When you go in adultery, when you go in a, a sex, sexual relationship outside of the marriage, you should be also uh, be able to, I mean, face the consequences and in accept this case, that. Yes, yeah. in this case, literally carry your own cross. Uh, somehow uh, assume that, uh, but uh, as you saw, as you know, also I'm a lawyer. So I'm just giving a position as a church leader, right, but right. I can also give you what the law says. Before we go there, let's, oh, okay. let's, let's allow the other place, <coughs> Mama Janet. I mean, for those who either speak about pro or those who say not at all to abortion, do, do you think we are already running to the uh, cure instead of spending more effort as parents in dealing with the prevention of, of, of these unwanted pregnancies? I mean... I've seen a lot of people on the Twitter timeline. I've seen a lot of conversations. Those who are saying we have to allow for, I mean, decriminalize abortion. We seem to be putting more energies in the cure as opposed to putting energy in the prevention. Is this how you read it from a parent's perspective? Oh, thank you so much, Eugene. As a parent, definitely I would say that no parent would really feel comfortable mm -hmm. escorting a child to hospital to abort. Mm -hmm. It is something that will hurt you forever. And uh, when you look at the current situation of our children, I think I would uh, say as parents, we have actually had no time to discuss with our children about sexual life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, parents these days, I think, don't have time to discuss that. They shy away from that. I will give an example. My daughter went to a Christian school, mm -hmm. and uh, they invited people to come and talk about sexual reproductive, reproductive health, health uh, you know, how children can handle that situation. But uh, to tell you the truth, not many parents went. Mm -hmm. So talking about uh, legalizing that, I think there are so many things we can look at right. and see uh, and put in our checks and balances. Why has it been happening? Mm -hmm. Where have we gone wrong as parents? Did we have enough time to educate our children about you know, early sex, the consequences, and the consequences are uh, coming together with that. There's still a lot that is hitting in our minds as parents, mm. and I think we should actually take this up. I was reading on, uh, on Twitter this morning about the Imbuto Foundation, the program it has put forward, booklets mm -hmm. in schools. Do we teach uh, reproductive health in schools? I don't mm. think so. Mm. We, haven't talk, we haven't even talked about it to our children. So this is a topic people actually don't... They shy um, away from they it. They shy away from it. They don't talk about it freely. But I'm sure if we engaged our children earlier enough, you know, from the age, the, the, you know, the puberty uh, level, we start talking about issues about reproductive health, consequences that will come with it. I'm sure there should be something that can come up and... Uh, and avert uh, uh, yes. the, the situation. But, but mm. sadly, we have parents who would be wondering, why would a teacher be telling my child about sex and sexual reproductive health? We have parents who still feel that you are planting the seed of wanting to do it. Uh, Our children childhood. are ahead of us. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you the mm -hmm. truth. Technology mm -hmm. has brought everything out. These are the same parents are giving children telephones, mobile phones, with the internet on. Definitely, these children will get the information, whether you tell them or not. So they are ahead of time. They are ahead of us. So what we need to do, we shouldn't shy away from this. Say the children are still young. The earlier, the better. Because there is technology that is teaching it. Then why not in school? Mm -hmm. Then why not in homes? 
then why not forming like, uh, you know, clubs of these where they can relate with the brothers and sisters, they sit down and talk about it. Right. You know, they can create a big, uh, you know, campaign awareness whereby they can learn about it and make it part of their life. Right, so they should not shy away from it. Yes. Dr. Aphrodis, HDI has been one of the non-government organizations that have actually been pushing for the issue of making access to, uh, uh, you know, safe abortion to be a bit easier saying that the current law as it is was restrictive a bit, you know, going through the courts to determine whether that was a rape case before you were granted by a judge who actually sort of has a backlog of other cases. By the time the judge is deciding, you are already, let's say, seven months pregnant. By the time you're given that authorization, you can now actually procure this abortion. You go to the doctor and the doctor tells you it's too late. You cannot actually go ahead with this abortion. Looking at the current changes that are being proposed in the new uh, you know, penal code. Uh, is this something that HDI is celebrating, that there are some things that were taken in from what you are calling for? Or would you still be saying there's still a long way to go in allowing for safe abortion to be procured? Yeah, I mean, looking at uh, the progress in Rwanda, mm -hmm. if we start from the, the, the law that was reviewed in 2012, mm -hmm. where um, a woman who would be uh, found the guilt of abortion would go for prison for 15 years and today we are talking about one to three years in the law that was uh, signed in 2012 uh, there is still there's a lot of progress that has been made of course uh, we would want to see more progress towards um, uh, removing uh, restrictions if you look at the current law uh, penal code of course we just saw that uh, it's around in some cases but we still have uh, barriers around the court process the court process is tedious, it takes a lot of time, and sometimes by the time the court uh, uh, pulls out the judgment, the woman is already uh, almost delivering. We've had cases. But also the process to go through court is not an easy process for most of the Rwandan women, I mean, uh, because of the stigma involved, uh, the whole process, the time it takes, the bureaucracy. So looking at the, at the new law, the draft that you just mentioned, mm. so we are very happy that... Um, there is a consideration to remove the court process, at least for the cases that are exempted. That's rape, incest, uh, forced marriage, and of course the new provision that was added around child. If, the, if the pregnant person is a child. So if you remove the court, the court process, that's a very good step. We would want to see more uh, moving towards that restrictions because there's evidence to suggest that having uh, harsh laws does not stop abortion from taking place. Mm. So we, unsafe abortion is a reality. If you look at the numbers of maternal mortality in Rwanda, it's one of the five leading causes of maternal mortality. So that's why we have to address it. So when we take steps towards ensuring that uh, women, girls who need to access safe abortion can access it, it's about saving lives. Mm. And, and, and I think actually it's not an issue of whether you're pro-life or not, but I, it's about I see saving the bishop women. Shaking his head, but we'll come back to you. Let's <laughs> yes. hear from, yes. from okay. Juliet. Juliet, in a, from a feminist perspective, I've seen some even talk about, you know, the, the provisions that are being allowed are actually, they, they need to widen it to a situation where it is about deciding what to do with your body and with your health as a right, that this is my body, my choice. Is this, is, could, you, could you kindly probably just explain this? Because I, 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 and if you share in this kind of thought that he says, yes, indeed, we are happy that there are some things that have been, you know, taken in consideration from 15 years to one year, you say. Would you want to see a situation where they say, you know what, you decide what you want to do with your life? Are you also sharing the same thought as a feminist? I would say that I do because, uh, as he said, uh, putting restriction on the or, or putting a laws around abortion mm -hmm. doesn't make them stop or people will go through unsafe abortion. And sometimes it's a personal decision. Our beliefs and um, personal decisions <coughs> should not be a, like a formal thing because we live in a diversity. Um, we live in diversity. We, Rwanda is not a country where we would say we are religious. It's not like a Muslim country or a religious country. We, ha we have a diversity of mind. So you should be allowed to do whatever you no, want? It's not about <laughs> whatever you want. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, if we look um, like uh, being um, pro pro abortion doesn't incite people to go into abortion so it's a personal decision if someone decides to do it it be, be, because of so, so many things maybe because they are they're not economically stable maybe because they are young they're still in school so you can't force something on someone because of a of a very big percentage of people who believe in um, in in religious belief or or in our background traditional background and then we want to impose the same belief on people who wants to do it mm. Yeah. But the bishop said here, when you're entering into a certain action, mm -hmm. let's say of engaging in the sexual affair or activity, you should be ready to bear the consequences. This is what you were saying. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk for it and what you think about that statement. Yes, the consequences. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> on the on his perspective, mm -hmm. the the right way to like have sex it's through marriage mm -hmm. but we are having girls who are having sex before marriage and we cannot deny that we see that there are numbers mm -hmm. we have uh, every year in rwanda 17,000 girls get pregnant so we, we need to deal it's a crisis and we need to deal with it so right now as um, mama janet was saying uh teaching girls from a uh, from a younger age about their body, but at this age you're going to change, it's going to change, at this age you will have sexual desires, mm -hmm. it's because it's there, mm -hmm. yeah? <laughs> and we can't deny that. So we need to deal with that crisis right now because it's a problem, but it's as if we are, we are ignoring Burying it. our heads in the sand. Yes, yes, and it's there. So dealing with it is allowing them, giving them their, uh, that right to do it and also protecting lives because when you allow someone to do it you, you also protect their life for the future and if we say that we are a gender country that believe in gender so it's some of the things that it's not that they're asking it's their right it's their right bishop twice you have shake, shaken your head <laughs> next time you made a certain sound uh, <laughs> uh, two things that have been said by the two speakers mm -hmm. First, by Dr. Afrodis from HDI saying that, you know what, we are happy that the, 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 the current, uh, rather the, the, the new uh, amendments that have been proposed mm -hmm. have actually made it a bit lighter compared to what it is today, yeah. from, from 15 years to one year. You know, uh, the possibility of removing the judges on the way and now being a decision that is made by the minister in charge of health of that particular country. I want to hear from you. Is this something that makes you worried as a religious leader that we are having some provisions that are probably making it a bit easier, that someone does it and says, at least I'm going to spend one year, not 15 years as, as before. Does it worry you? Uh, it worries me because sometimes we are dealing with the consequences rather than dealing with the right causes of the issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do agree that for medical purposes, uh, um, abortion can be allowed to save the life of the mother. Uh, in that case, um, no one will argue and say that this is not possible. Because I know like uh, a woman who has been in like C-section for four or five times, mm -hmm. and um, uh, uh, the next time when she got like pregnant, the medical doctor will advise advise her to do abortion that can happen mm -hmm. i do also i uh, recently had a case with a, a woman who was like uh, having a, um, uh, um, a high pressure uh, um, um, uh, you know, uh, heart pressure, pressure. Yeah. and uh, uh, the medical doctor informed her that she should abort because mm -hmm. she couldn't make it to four months uh, she was yes. only on at four months mm -hmm. and the, her life was really in danger so that's uh, the exception you can find in our legislation. Let me say that our legislation... What about the other ones? Uh, uh, rape, incest, um, yeah. post-marriage? So uh, as a church leader, we don't up open for that room, but I can't oppose the government opening that room. Mm -hmm. I, I'm saying as a church leader, you say no. my, my advice would be to deal with the problem. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes even after rape, 
you um, allow somebody to do abortion, but there are many consequences after even abortion. Mm. We as pastors deal with problems of uh, psychological issues uh, uh, of after abortion. Uh, recently I met a, a, a woman. She lives in Belgium. She did abortion there. It's even legally accepted. She did it. Uh, she went to the medical doctor. He did it uh, easily. Uh, but uh, she couldn't. Uh, she got married after three years and she couldn't get a child. Now, she called me saying, Pastor, I did uh, this. I aborted twice. Now I'm married. I can't get a child. And she will tell me that my, I only have nightmares. I, I know I'm under depression because if I knew, I could let those children live and get married with those children. So you understand that sometimes we don't, we think that we are like, you know, resolving the problem by also causing many other problems. And uh, as I was saying, uh, you know, protecting the life of uh, uh, the girl who has been raped, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. But how about the child uh, who is maybe two, three, four months, if sometimes seven, eight months, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that child didn't do any mistake. It's like punishing the child uh, instead of asking uh, my, the, the, the girl to assume and uh, cope with it, deal with it. And uh, we, we know children were born after rape now who are like, you know, uh, you know uh, serving the society who are really good people. We are, I mean, so we, what would you be suggesting uh, in such a case? Uh, uh, Someone who's watching us tonight underwent rape, she's probably, let's say, three months, uh, you know. So uh, when you come to you my shop as a pastor, I will yes. give you the only product I sell. Mm -hmm. I, I tell people to, uh, you know, uh, be patient, uh, give birth to that child, and um, deal with the consequences and try to cope with, and life continues. And, life uh, continues. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mama Janet, I mean, mm. she is definitely probably the age of your daughter. If, 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 if she was telling you, mm. having that sex talk with you about what she thinks should be her rights as a lady, and she told you what she just said, that if we believe that Rwanda is a gender, pro-gender country, then we should let these issues of sexual reproductive health be the rights of the people themselves. Let them decide what they want to do with themselves. What would you have done to her? What would you have told her? Would you have received a slap? <laughs> what would you have told her? Well, it, uh, I don't think it would be a good one mm -hmm. because uh, as a mother, there's no way I could. First of all, we reason it out. Mm -hmm. Why did you go through that? Mm -hmm. It was your choice. But let me tell you what would happen. Somebody will disagree with a man somewhere. They, they will come and start saying I need to abort because I'm not in the I'm not agreeing things are not okay. Yes. It's like we are giving green light to people to keep, you know, bringing up problems mm -hmm. so that they are bought. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it as, as a parent. Because when you start giving somebody a go ahead, go and do this, that means so many people will be doing it, mm -hmm. by the way. So many people will be saying, you know, the law permits us to, to, to abort. She talked about freedom of choice. Yes. So if you send your daughter or your daughter goes and gets pregnant and there she comes, freedom of choice. Well, there are so many things you have to look at it as, uh, you know, when you are a parent and you hear that, mm -hmm. it is like the law has given a lot of room for our children to go do it because they will have the right of choice. Because they will come and say, the guy lied to me and I no longer want, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm suffering, I'm doing that. I agree with, with Bishop, saving life is something else. It's very crucial that uh, you save a life of yes. somebody yes. Uh, if health-wise it's not working. Right. But rushing to saying that you do it, then you'll have a way out of it. Mm -hmm. As a mother, I think we are opening the door too much for our children to start saying, it's my right. I'm mature, I can do what I want. My body, my choice. My body is mature, meaning that we shall not even have a say towards some of our children who 
because children come up with character with their different characters as they grow up the western has influenced them yeah. so much so coming to a mixture of a rwandan culture the western culture then you'll find this girl standing in front of her mother saying it's my right mm -hmm. so tell me how you feel as a mother if we if so many of us will have those rights in our homes mm -hmm. Of course, it is going to hurt so many families, meaning that the law has opened for our children to keep doing what they want to do. But I think there are other ways we can handle with it, we can handle it right now. Educate, educate, educate. Educate is the key. I one. like the First Lady's program. Start now. Booklets are there. And I'm sure there is going to be results out of those booklets. Because, you know, most of the children do it out of ignorance. For me, I mean for punish people who put children into other sex, punish them heavily, and that punishment can actually also, you know, reverse the thinking of, of you know, people taking young girls into other sex and all that. Right. Keeping those punishments, educating, and then, you know, when a child, when it happens and you see this child about to die, you can save a life, but you don't give a room because to so many of our children. No, to so many of our children. Something about... Uh, then we'll my, go to Dr. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's burning with some yeah, yeah. points to, 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 to yeah. put across. Something yes. about my body, my choice. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, it's easier to have that thinking, but uh, also you have to assume the consequences. Uh, can we allow my body, my, my choice in drugs? Can you allow my body, my, my choice in suicide? So why only in adoption? Abortion. Uh, abortion. So uh, to my point of view, uh, this should not be a, a case. You should not think about yeah. it at all. No. Dr. Aphrodis, I mean, how do you convince a mother like Mama Janet, who actually says the more we allow this or we open doors, we're actually creating more room for more people to actually go through this uh, exercise? Uh, you know, because you said 15 years to one year. You know, remove the judge because these are some of the obstacles that were being mentioned earlier on as, as, as being part of the major causes as to why most uh, mothers or young women and girls go through uh, unsafe abortion. So how do you convince them that, you know what, loosening this news a bit or not focusing much on the punishment is not going to make people procure abortion carelessly? How do you convince people? Yeah, that I mean, you have to look at the evidence. Uh, I will start by just highlighting a few facts. Uh, when, when the abortion law was changed, when the penal code was changed in 2012, I think we had a lot of uh, uh, resistance from the church and people were saying now abortion has been happened, every woman is going to have abortion. But looking at the data, between 2012 and 2015, we only had five cases go to court. Only five. Out of those five, I think only two were able to get... Uh, court judgment have abortion. So it's not true that when you open it up, because it's, it's not an easy process. Going through court is complicated. A woman taking a decision to have an abortion is not an easy process. When we look at the numbers in Rwanda, 47% of all pregnancies in Rwanda are unintended. They are unplanned. And, and, and they, they and say, let's look at the drug for preventing or dealing with that. Yes, I agree. I agree with Yes, I agree with the prevention, but when you're looking at the policy or the legal framework, mm -hmm. you have to plan for everyone. Mm -hmm. There has to be education, and I think uh, comprehensive sexual education has been integrated into the school curriculum. That's a very good step. Mm -hmm. As of 2016, we need to make sure that teachers are ready and um, uh, the kids who are in school have a chance to have enough information, accurate information, because there is a lot of misinformation that is not really giving them the right one. So we need to make sure that we take that direction. We need to have access to family planning and productive health services. Yeah, we, she just talked about uh, 17,000 who got unintended pregnancy in 2016, I think. Yes, 20. So that's a high number, teenage pregnancy. When, out of those teenagers, we don't know what happened. Some of them decided to have abortions. And, 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 and safe abortion actually brings most of the complication that uh, the bishop was talking about. When you have a safe abortion, it may complicate. You may end up using your, losing your uterus. You may have infection. And by the time you decide to have uh, a family, you can't be able to have a baby. But safe abortion is one of the safest procedures if it is done by people who are qualified. Over 95% safe. Whether medical or surgical, 
it's very safe. There's evidence to, to, to suggest that. If it is, and that's what we're looking at. Because we know that by putting in place laws, it is not stopping it from happening. In 2012, before 2012, when we still had uh, uh, 15 years of prison, there was a study done by Boothman Institute and uh, the School of Public Health that showed about 60,000 abortions in Rwanda. The sentence was 15 years of prison for a provider of a woman or a girl who undergoes through abortion. Mm. But still, an unsafe abortion was taking place. Still taking and place. what we're talking about is whether you put in place harsh laws, and safe abortion is going to continue to take away the lives of our women and girls and sisters. And, and so that's why we're looking at how do you put in place the legal framework, the policy framework, that is looking for everybody. So that that woman who would take that decision to go and have a safe abortion with the, the assistance of a traditional healer or with the buying pills herself, using uh, procedures that are, not, that are not safe, that actually end up taking her life, how do you save her? And the only way is to have a policy that allows providers where you raise awareness and be able to provide that kind of service and be able to save lives. Of, 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 of the women who we are losing because of unsafe abortion right. and, and, and even reduce on the number of complications. So I agree we should have family planning, but also let's look at, let's look at the reality. Today, over 30% of the health facilities are in the hands of religious physicians that are not even comfortable to provide more than family planning. Mm. The rate yeah. of family planning usage <laughs> is at 48% in the country. So how do we deal with all that? So we know that there are some people who are going to, going to not have access to services, who will make that decision? And when a woman decides to have an safe abortion, whatever is there, she will take that step. And then we end up having a loss of life that is, could have actually been prevented. Right. I, I, I see again, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to come back to you on that okay. issue of the ownership of medical facilities, the schools, yeah. uh, you know, being in the hands mostly of religious leaders who actually are anti, whether it is access to contraceptives or, or what, how that hampers uh, the issue of access uh, to, uh, you know, sexual productive health and rights. But before that, Juliet, I, I want to read your thoughts, basically from a young person's perspective. I mean, where are we going wrong? What is the missing link? How do we deal with this issue, whether if it is talking about, you know, prevention, which uh, Mama Janet and the bishop are saying we need to actually talk about that. Let's not focus more on dealing with the repercussions, but mostly the, the, the prevention. What is the missing link? What needs to be done so that we can now, you know, win that battle of prevention and talk less about the action of now saying, oh, my God, I'm pregnant. What do I do? Okay. Abortion. I think um, the young people are being blamed by the mistakes of our parents and the society globally. Mm -hmm. When you look at Rwanda in, 19, in, in, in the 19 years, uh, girls used to, get, used to get married at 14, 15, 16. But right now, we are in school. But that's, that doesn't stop that they are not sexually active. Mm. They are. And then because of parents, okay, there is a materialist perspective, but there is also the need of feeding the family. And then children are ignored. You can't start talking about sex if you don't talk about food. What did you eat today? How was school? But now the child is 16. You start, let's talk about sex. It won't work. It will never work. And that's where children will go to their friends. There is a say that not children nowadays called Google, anti-Google, because that's where we get all the information, because the parents are not there. And even if they are there, they're not like intentionally there. Where are the fathers? Because even, if, uh, even when we are talking about this, Men are kind of ignored, even in the law. Mm. The, the, there are few cases where you find that a woman who is in prison mm. serving three years mm. with the partner, mm. they are not there, they are not in prison. So, and then all the blame comes to their generation. This generation is dying, this generation. But what did our parents do? What did our parents do? Absolutely. Mm. What did they do? Mm to blame us. If they come today and say, we gave you all the information, that we you provided. Yeah. Now today we are dealing with crisis. 
And now, and we are kind of ignoring it. We don't even want to talk about it because it's a taboo, mm. but it shouldn't be a taboo. Right. We should all together take this crisis and find solution. And then in the long term, then we will see that we say, no, we've provided <coughs> this now that the curriculum, in the curriculum is there. Let the teachers talk about it. Right. Let they talk about it at home. Right. Yes. Perfect. Mama Janet, is it too late for parents? No, it is not to too late. It is not too late the because there are still children being born today, mm -hmm. and they need to live. It's not too late, and even these uh, the, 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 the grown-ups that we have, it is not too late. Right. You know, I, I I really want to tell you that it's rare. I I can bet this that a father can sit with a daughter or a son. Mm -hmm and talk about it in homes. Rwandans have this culture of living. I, was, I, I used to chat with my mother. Long ago, they used to send girls to their aunties yeah. to talk about it. They, because I think they also were shy to discuss with their children. But if you are a family, how often does a father and a mother sit with their children and talk about this. I don't think there is So time. we need to do that. So now we are, and I'm now talking about people, the elite, who can, who went to school, who can talk about that. But in the villages, that's where the most cases are. Parents find it so difficult even to talk about sex. So mm -hmm. we have to teach right from the parents. Because teaching children without teaching parents Teach them to be open and comfortable. The way we have been talking about HIV all over, going here and there. The only talk parents say these days is that, you know, HIV is a killer. But you don't talk about other things. So you find that people moved to talking about HIV, but they never even went into details about what other consequences are there. If you have uh, early sex. So I, I can assure you, if... A child sees mom and dad sitting around the table discussing about these issues, they will take it serious. But you are listening, you are hearing it from other people. You are learning it from Google. And when you talk about, the, when you find a child looking, at, you know, some parents find children looking at movies, with these love movies, mm. and say, what are you doing with that? That's not good. Mm. So... They make them like they are so inquisitive. They also want to know. They start now what researching. What is being told yes. not to watch? So, but instead of finding that movie going on and you sit with them, you say, you know what? At your age, this is not right. Uh, and these things you are watching, the consequences are here. They are talking about this. But you start now yelling, mm. shutting the TV down, uh, giving punishments, meaning that you also don't want to talk about it. So You're putting your head in the yes. sand. Uh, Dr. Aphrodis, this is what the parents want, and this is what uh, Mama Janet is, is suggesting as, as part of the solution to this challenge. As HDI, where does the solution lie? As I go to read some of the tweets that we're already having there, you can continue talking uh, as, as I go to the screen to read yeah. some of those <coughs> tweets. What, what do we need to do now? Certainly, that's one of the solutions, right. uh, engaging uh, on discussing about sex education for, right. for young people. Mm -hmm. But again... Uh, and safe abortion is not only a problem of young people. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't only shift to only kids or mm -hmm. children. It's also an issue for women. And, and I think, for me, that's one of, the, uh, one of the steps we need to do, making sure that people have accurate information so they can make informed choices. But if they decide, for example, to be sexually active and they need to have access to family planning, how many of our institutions are ready to give them family planning? A 17-year-old couple boy and a girl, would they access family planning easily? It's not easy. We still have a lot of stigma because we still think they're children and they can't decide mm -hmm. to be sexually active and have access to family planning. So the solution as from HDI is uh, to avoid these uh, unwanted pregnancies and unsafe abortions, let's start with giving them access to contraceptives. Yes, there is education. We should mm -hmm. give them access to contraceptives, mm -hmm. access to information and services, mm -hmm. but also have the legal framework, like the one we're talking about, mm -hmm. changing the, 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 the law on, on abortion mm -hmm. to make sure those who take that decision or who find themselves in that situation, we can be able to protect them from dying. Mm. Is yeah. this something that you'd advocate for, Bishop? Um, yeah, I, I, I do support uh, the comprehensive sex education, mm -hmm. and uh, that should be done by the family as well as by the church. I do also support um, 
contraceptives. I see. I hear doctor <laughs> not contraceptive. whispering. You don't. But you don't a, emergency, uh, uh, in emergency situation, we can we can tell people about uh, birth control because they have also to know that, and uh, we can we also have to play a key role as a church in um, uh, dealing with uh, emotionally consequences of that. So the, I think the church has to play that role. So uh, as well as we are not uh, against all what others are doing because we are you know, uh, offering solutions, but others have other, other solutions. Uh, remember, all Rwandans don't go to church. Mm. So if uh, those can access those uh, uh, you know, uh, solutions outside the church, let also the church focus on what it's uh, supposed to be doing, mm. especially education, educating people, and um, let them people be aware of uh, also that way of abstinence also. They don't have, uh, you know, to try everything. They have also to know that you, you can also protect yourself. You know, it's better to protect yourself than, rather than, you know, uh, seeking medication, mm. if, if you can do that. This is how you look at it. Yeah. Let me just quickly take a look at what we are being told. I see so far we have 32 new results. Let's take a look at what our people are saying right here. We have uh, Christoph, who's actually saying measures should be taken on avoiding unwanted pregnancies, not to totally decriminalize abortion because it can even minimize fear or open doors on having early sex, which can come up with terrible family pro problems. Measures should be taken on avoiding unwanted pregnancies. But Bishop, people have said in many instances that most religious leaders are actually, they're not speaking from the reality point of view. When you talk of saying, you know what, abstain. But young people today, most of them, sexually active from ages of 12 years or, 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 or even less, they're already having sex and they're already sort of getting these unwanted pregnancies. So can the religious leaders also do some upgrading uh, or, or updating <laughs> no. of the software no, no. and say that let's go to the reality? <laughs> Is this something no. that can happen? When we talk about abstention, mm -hmm. it's the reality. But when somebody cannot abstain himself or herself, mm -hmm. then let that person go to another shop where you know the civil society and others who can give that solution but for us we can only you know profess what we believe in mm. so can, can can someone do both can they no, still no. be in your church and still no. go to Afrodi <laughs> <laughs> so if he comes back from that, that uh, solution mm -hmm. uh, I don't have that right of blaming or judging mm -hmm. that's also another function <laughs> of the church right we uh, have also to profess love mm. And we don't love people because they are good people, because they have sent themselves. We love them even after what they've done. So if somebody comes after abortion, I welcome that person. But I can't tell that person to go to abortion. Mm. Yeah. Right. Mama, what would you say about the measures that should be taken? I mean, uh, we, we, we need to do more effort. We need to put in more effort. But how do we collectively do that? How do we collectively achieve this same result that we want of preventing and not talking about uh, the cure? Well, for me, I still insist on preventing right. education, right. campaigns, uh, several campaigns in schools, in the communities that would lead to, peop to uh, yes. uh, our children understand the consequences of, of, of everything that they will go through right. if they do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not... Uh, a lawyer mm -hmm. and I don't want to go against the law because I don't understand it more as a mother definitely I still need more education but where circumstances are there that can take somebody's life I mean we we, we still we still uh, save the life than saying okay you die because you did it uh, so we need to educate more because, you know, this, there is a generation today, there is a generation to come, and there is still more generations to come. Right. So if we start early, if we start now, uh, I'm sure we can, we can achieve uh, a lot in terms of our children. Continuing the continuing, generations. Continuing, yes. Right. Dr. Aphrodis, I mean, uh, uh, the bishop here said earlier on, on that provision uh, of, of, you know, if the pregnancy was a result of rape, saying that, you know what, give a chance to that child. Don't go underboard because the law provides that you actually have the right to actually go underboard. 
I want to hear from your perspective as a person who's worked on the ground as a civil society organization, how realistic is that? I mean, it comes back to the decision of the one who is really uh, carrying that pregnancy. And, and I think that's why we have to, to come back and put ourselves in the shoes mm -hmm. of the pregnant woman or girl who, who has gone through that experience. Uh, certainly when she makes a decision to have an abortion, she will do whatever is possible to have that abortion. Mm -hmm. And that's what actually happens. They end up procuring a safe abortion. Because it, it comes back to her decision. It comes back to what does she want. There are women who will decide and access because also of the economic status. Mm. Again, there's another issue of, uh, of, of poverty that we don't, we don't always see. When you, talk to the, when you look at the women who are in prison, most of them are really from the uh, lowest economic status. They are very poor. So those who have resources can access, can access maybe and procure safe abortion. So it comes back to the woman. So when she decides to have an abortion, she should have it in a way that is safe done by a provider who is trained in a very safe environment to avoid the unsafe abortion, which of course, which would have complications, complications. that would even include, include death. Right. Yeah. Juliet, yes. what do young people want? Young people of your age, if you're given a microphone and told, you're speaking on their behalf, on this conversation of access to safe uh, abortion, what do you think people out there really, really want to happen moving forward? Okay. In conclusion. Uh, I would just talk about what I've heard, mm -hmm. the few people, there are those ones who say that my body, my choice, mm -hmm. because for so many reasons that we can list. And then there is another thing um, in developing countries, um, because safe, uh, safe abortion is allowed, they have less abortion than in developing country, countries where we think that putting law that are very strict, it's, th that is what is preventing, but we are just uh, lying to ourselves because it's happening and no one is taking a decision or influencing people to go and do it. So what I would say, what my generation wants, mm. uh, they want to be free because in their mind already it's there and you're not inciting them actually you're not telling them to do it because they already know they know that at 25 i cannot have a child no matter what so, so they will I'm still living in my parents yes house. i'm still living in my parents house and then i still have um i still have a long uh, life i still have to enjoy my life i still have to work hard because they don't want to go through poverty and as he said many people who do that i are poor because they think, how am I going to raise this child? How am I going to do it? So that is what I would say. And then they, they would want to, 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 to see contraception being available. Because even the name itself in Kinyarwanda is not safe for single people. It's, mm. it's called Kubone Zurubjaru. Mm. How, and then you'll hear people, how are you going Kubone Zurubjaru Tarabona? Like, how are you going to start... Uh, planning for a family that you don't have already mm. and when they go there they start teaching them about um, you should abstinate from sex you should not do this and those things don't really match and they go to Google they go to somewhere else and then they end up those yeah yes uh, Bishop as your closing remarks uh, those are few and uh, we should not change legislation for few people and uh, but few people are still people uh, yeah, they have a right no? uh, yes but uh, you know uh, we have a legislation on uh, ant robbery on mm. uh, you know but uh, um, we can't say that because they are, we still have thieves, we, we should now discriminalize it. Mm. Uh, to my point of view, uh, uh, we should be asking this question. Is our society ready to uh, um, uh, uh, free and, uh, and open abortion to everyone who wants it? Mm. I think we, we should be um, cautious about this. Mm. If a study can be conducted and know if people are ready to do it. We can even make it easier and will not have people going there. Mm. So it's better to, to see the change in the society. Mm. From my point of view, we should emphasize on other uh, you know, remedies, other solutions, rather than just sticking on uh, opening up for abortion. Mm. Yeah. Right. So moving from these four walls tonight, when you go back to your congregation, because religious leaders have a lot of following and a lot of you know, power when it comes to you know, influencing, what sort of commitment will be making personally and requesting for others in your 
issues to also be doing on at this at least issue four of things mm -hmm. number one comprehensive sex education a church mm -hmm. should be taking the forefront and uh, educate its members and members also should be replicating that education to their families mm -hmm. that's one number two uh, we should uh, uh, um, be tolerant to those uh, who don't uh, uh, make it mm -hmm. as, as we, we, we wish. If they come back to our churches after abortion, we should welcome them, no stigma. Right. At least on that point, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm against those people who like, discriminate or judge people about it. Number three, uh, uh, I think uh, the church also should be assuming its role of post-abortion if it happens. Mm. Uh, you know, when in counseling for mm. pastors, mm. you meet somebody who has you know, uh, uh, done uh, abortion, you have to know how to deal with that person and uh, help the person to recover. Number four, we should encourage people who are pregnant, even those uh, uh, real situation of like rape, of uh, incest, of uh, uh, you know, um, uh, um, forced marriage uh, to um, Sometimes accept what happened and give the chance to that child. Mm. Because that child can change the life of the, 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 the mother and the whole family and the society in general. Could be a yeah. president. Yeah. Who knows? Of course. Mama J J Janet, I mean, your conclusion in this conversation. I just want to react to what she said about um, my body, my choice. Right. Let's make it very brief. Very now, there are cases. Yeah. You are talking about somebody who has been in a school. But the majority of the rural communities, you will find a child is in school, she gets pregnant, but she will find it difficult even to share with parents. And those are many cases. Because imagine how she will feel, how will I face my mother, my father, I'm pregnant. And those are the cases that you are seeing people running away, having those um, uh, abortions that are done in a bad way and some lose lives, there is still that fear of parents. So don't, let us not ignore that and put it in our perspective while we are thinking about so many things. Mm. We, we also address that. What if she doesn't come? Right. What else can we do to actually stop, you know, avoid the pregnancy? Right. Mm. Perfect. Very, very briefly, I'm being told time is up. One liner, if you can. Yes. Uh, the issue of access to safe abortion is a women right issue. Mm -hmm. Taking steps to ensure that everyone who needs access to safe abortion can access it without any barriers is a very great step towards uh, respecting and promoting rights of women. Right. Rwanda has been leading in that case, looking at the recent progress, and, continue. and we look forward to have that. Access to family planning is very, very critical. We should have a show women. on this one. Yes, access to family planning is very critical. Of, to ensure that we keep to move, moving towards providing choices right. for people who, who need to make choices. Right. And, of course, we need to have an inclusive society that thinks for everyone. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Imabel is actually in my ears, screaming, saying, Anango, it's time to go. Of course, I would have loved to read all these tweets, so many of them coming through. Of course, we'll definitely be able to go through this. These conversations continue online. Let's keep talking uh, to each other online. The hashtag, as always, is in focus RW. Of course, we'll definitely be able to come back again next time, same place. This is that time when we, start, we have to say bye-bye and leave or give way for the news in English to come through. We'll see you again next time, same place. I'm always Eugene. And Good night.